presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are St. Louis. This is St. Louis Cardinals baseball. And this afternoon from Cincinnati and the Great American Ballpark. Game number four, the St. Louis Cardinals and the Cincinnati Reds. With the Cardinals Hall of Famer Jim Edmonds, I'm Dan McLaughlin. Jim Hayes is here as well. The Cardinals trying to shake things up with their lineup, get something going. Matt Carpenter will stay at the top. Dexter Fowler bats second today. Yeah, you can see they're twisting up this lineup a little bit. You got to move it around, but you really can't break it. Bend and move and try to, to move some pieces around, but you don't really want to send a message that you're panicking. So try to do a little something different today. Mike Leak, hopefully he can go out there and make quick work of the Cincinnati Reds. Cardinals trying to avoid the sweep. They're trying to pick up one win on this road trip. The former Red, Mike Leak, gets the call today for St. Louis. Leak and the Cardinals coming up on Fox Sports Midwest. is brought to you by Bud Light, famous among friends, by Chevy Silverado, the most dependable, longest-lasting, full-size pickups on the road. Find yours at your local Mid-America Chevy dealer. And by Menards. Save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. Beautiful day in the banks of the Ohio here in Cincinnati, the great American ballpark. Cincinnati now a game and a half in front of St. Louis. The Cardinals have dropped six straight and with that four and a half games back of Milwaukee. The Cardinals lineup features Matt Carpenter at the top then Dexter Fowler the switch hitter Steven Piscotti Jed Jerko Yadier Molina Tommy Pham Aledmus Diaz Paul DeYoung the rookie and Mike Leake the veteran. It's Scott Feldman he was the opening day starter this year for the Reds getting the call today. 
A look at his Hyundai pitch arsenal, the cutter, fastball, curve, and change. Feldman, a big guy, 6'6, 230 pounds, signed a one year deal in the offseason. Last year, worked both as a starter and reliever, split time with Houston and Toronto, went seven and four. And as I mentioned, the opening day starter for the Reds. The umpires today calling the balls in strikes will be Bill Welke, Chad Fairchild at first, David Rackley at second, and the crew chief Alfonso Marquez down at third. Matt Carpenter, a 295 career hitter from the top of the lineup. On the year, a 210 average. Couple of hits in this series. He was on base twice last night, including a home run. His first extra base hit in 57 at bats. And the 1 0. Two balls and no strikes. 73 degrees here in Cincinnati. In the mid 60s last night. The 2 0 pitch. I saw the pitch arsenal with Feldman. And already just cutters more than, not very often do you see cutters more than the fastball. Guys are going to throw cutters, move the ball around. You can see that velocity is not anything special, but the inconsistency of the cutter and the fastball make it just a little tough to get a good read on how you're going to approach a guy like this. Three and one the count. Hitters count here for Carpenter. Outfield is straight away. And it's three and two. The idea for the Cardinals when they signed Dexter Fowler is that you'd have Fowler at the top, then Aledmus Diaz, and then Matt Carpenter. The Plaza Tire Service Fox Tracks. So all three a year ago, high on base percentage, but the Cardinals having to change some things up trying to get it going. Carpenter, a ground ball into the shift. And there's one away. That was your third baseman, Scooter Jeanette, today with that shift. The right side of the infield. 27 airs committed by the Reds, second fewest in the National League. Around the horn, presented by Dobbs. Duvall, Hamilton, now with six outfield assists to lead the National League. Shebler is in right. Jeanette, Cozart, Barraza, Votto on the infield, and Tucker Barnhart. Splitting time with Devin Mazzarocco gets the start today behind the plate. So today breaks a streak of 240 consecutive starts as a leadoff hitter for Dexter Fowler. And it's no balls and two strikes. I wonder for him if that's different going backwards as it would be for someone going up into the order. I think being the leadoff hitter making the adjustment to go to the top is a heck of a lot harder than it would be to drop down. Responsibilities a little bit different in that role too. And just the anxiety of leading off the game I think is tough. I remember back in the day doing that a couple times and it just it, it's it's your last 20 minutes all you can think about is that at bat. Strikeout of Fowler the cutter. And there's two away. Good look at that cutter right there. It's not a big cutter. It's almost like a football. You've got throwing that ball, just hold it a little off center and kind of throwing it. And basically, what he's trying to do is just have another pitch that's not going to run away from the hitters. And now he's got something that will run or stay straight to the lefty. Here's Steven Piscotti. Since May 31st, the Cardinal outfielder batting 417 with seven walks. And reaching base in all eight games that he's played in. Last night was the first time this year he's had back to back multi hit games. 
And a nice interview with Jim A's on the pregame show. One and two. Outfield is straight away. And the one two pitch. Struck him out. Check swing could not hold up. And Barnhart applies the tag. The former Red might lead to the mound when we come back. We move to the bottom of the first. Mike Leak, the Hyundai pitch arsenal. The cutter, he's throwing it more this year, and it's been a very effective pitch for Mike, nearly 27% of the time. Billy Hamilton, the switch hitter, the speedster for Cincinnati, will lead it off. Hitting 252, this has been his better side of the plate. 261 from the left side, 222 from the right side. Hamilton, Cozart, and Votto, Duvall, Shebler, who has just killed the Cardinals this year, Jeanette, Peraza, Barnhart, and the pitcher. And the first pitch is a ball. Hamilton leads the National League and steals with 28. And as a team, the Reds lead the National League. The 2 0 pitch popped up left side. Jerko gives it a look, and it's out of play. Well, the Cardinals in game one of this series had a lead, couldn't hold it. And it was Hamilton in that seventh inning dropping down a bunt, got things going. 2 0 at that point. Became 2 2 and then an eventual 4 2 lead for Cincinnati and a win. Carlos Martinez was magnificent. Game two, Scooter Jeanette, 17th player to hit four home runs in a game and a really tough loss last night. Little bouncer hit to the right side, gloved by DeYoung, and there's one away. A look at the Cardinals defensively. Famine left. Fowler back in there with the start in center. Piscotti is in right. Jerko, Diaz, DeYoung, Carpenter on the infield, and Yadier Molina is behind the plate. Here's Zach Cozart. Very well could be an all star and probably should be this year for Cincinnati. And he pulls it foul. Second in the league in average at 351. Leading the league, Ryan Zimmerman at 362. Ground ball that's hit to short, backhanded by Diaz. Two away. Take a look at our Toyota keys to the game. Mike Lee can get to that seventh inning. 
have to be a little leery about it because his ERA is 11. Seventh inning and beyond. Seems to be the problem with the St. Louis Cardinals in general is just keeping that lead after six innings has really haunted them this year. And, you know, we keep trying to pinpoint what it is and why, but if you look, it's kind of everything, you know, and Mike Leake's having a good year and then seventh inning's giving him trouble and seventh inning's giving everyone trouble the last couple days. Base hit for Votto. What a hitter. Do you remember him when you were playing here in Cincinnati choking up as much as he is this year? No, I have not. It seems like he's done it in situations, but I feel like he's a lot more exaggerated this year. And especially when he gets a guy that's throwing hard, he's even more so. I mean, it's almost like he's three, four inches up on the bat. Here's Adam Duvall. He is sixth in the National League in RBIs with 45. This has turned out to be a very good deal for the Cincinnati Reds. They traded Mike Leake to San Francisco to get Duvall, who had always shown power in their system, but never really got a chance. A couple of years ago, Giants going for it, adding Leake at the trade deadline. One ball, one strike. One thing about Mike Leake doesn't walk many doesn't strike out many so defense has got to be good the ball will be in play. And the one one pitch little flare into right and it drops in for a base hit. Votto on his way to third back to back singles for the Reds here in the bottom of the first. Mike makes a great pitch right here and so it's just part of the things that are going wrong. You make a really good pitch and you can see it looked like Stephen Piscotti is pretty deep in that situation but obviously a day game the ball flies here. It's just part of the issues is always something on the negative side. You make a good pitch get a base hit make get a guy last the other night um, jam shot base hit runs runners move up so now you got pressure just because you, and, you, and you made a good pitch and that's what gets frustrating for some of these pitchers. Here's Shebler and a ground ball that's hit to DeYoung. Red strand two, no damage done one inning in the books here in Cincinnati there's no score. Mountain frozen drinks, any size drink, just 50 cents. The next day at On the Run.
Redbird scores six. Keep the celebration going. Stop by on the run tomorrow for a thirst quenching win. You earned it. Jed Jerko will lead it off. He is ninth in the National League in average at 314. Top five in road average at 341. Eight home runs. He's driven in 23. Molina on deck and then Tommy Pham. And we're underway here at the top of the second. Here's a 1 0 pitch. Popped up and out of play. Well, you played a lot of games in this ballpark. Visitor and wearing that red uniform. You talked about the sunshine on the backdrop. So here we have a day game and also you think about it defensively. This is always a ballpark that sees its fair share of home runs. And certainly when it starts to get hot here in Cincinnati the ball just flies out of here. Yeah the ball starts to carry as the weather warms up and you can even see the nice thing about this ballpark too is kind of see the right there the flags in the background that you always get a little breeze because of the, the river. For some reason, it comes right down the river and it usually is blowing out the right field, which in short ports it's still, and it makes it even better because I think this is a great place to hit. Two and two, the count. Jerko with tremendous power to the opposite way. They set up outside. Count runs to three and two. Full count here on Jed Jerko. Out of play. Last night it was the 14th time this year the Cardinals lost a game in which they led by at least two runs. Furthering the point that it's not just leak in the seventh inning but the entire team. It's a lot of little things build up add up over time and. When you make that many mistakes it tends to catch up with you. Cozart retires Jerko for the first out so that's four up and four down for Scott Feldman. You know, I mean making mistakes I'm just talking about the little things when you don't get a runner over or you don't get a runner in with less than two outs and a base running mistake here and an error here and there and then really just like I said things just add up and I feel like for me it's the momentum builder that they're not getting they're not getting that run in the fourth and then the adding on in the sixth and the seventh. And it's almost like you're keeping the team that you're playing around in the game and they always have a chance to catch up and then one walk and a bloop and a, you know it's like a bloop and a blast and all of a sudden here we go again. Votto to Feldman. Two strikeouts and now three ground bowl outs to start this afternoon. Brings in Tommy Pham. Feldman is from Hawaii. Forty one players. Have played in the major leagues from Hawaii. Colton Wong, nearly 500 major league games. That's sixth most among Hawaiian born players. And for Feldman, he's closing in on 200 career starts. Fifth most starts among a Hawaiian born player. Number one is Charlie Huff. Knuckleballer was a 216 game winner. Never knew he was from Hawaii. Yep. Not a bad place to be from. No, sir. That's uh, <laughs> about as good as it gets. Two balls and a strike on Fam. He was in center last night, left field today. The 2 2. It's 
been a much maligned starting staff here for the Cincinnati Reds, but you wouldn't know it in this series. Done a really good job. What you've seen too is not a lot of guys with velocity, guys moving the ball around, keeping you just a little bit off balance, and then turning it over to a bullpen who's pretty much full of flamethrowers. Good start for Feldman. Six up, six down. No score midway through two. Third member of our broadcast crew Jim Hayes let's check in with Jimmy Yeah, Matt back in the leadoff spot this afternoon and he says he sees the irony in that with Fowler sitting out last night Carpenter hit leadoff he said before the game he was concerned that if he had a good night the narrative would be it was because he was back at the top of the order then he went out and hit a home run today Carpenter hitting leadoff Fowler batting second Carpenter told me he hopes Fowler has a big day so as he put it the new narrative will be Dex hitting second is just the fix we needed Fowler's last two hundred and ninety plus starts have been as a leadoff hitter Dan Mike Matheny told us before the game Dexter saw this coming was even joking about it in the dugout last night after Carpenter Homer all right Jimmy thank you and your scooter Jeanette speaking of home runs four in one game just the seventeenth player to do that two nights ago in Major League history. I think uh, the way you described it when Carpenter hit that home run last night you said that's going to give Mike Matheny a headache. <laughs> it really does. A swing and a miss and Molina fires a strike to Carpenter for the out. It's always a game that you play with the lineups and you're always trying to get a group of guys that are hot obviously in the game each day but try to put them in the right spot in the order so they can feed off each other and then when you have a guy like Matt Carpenter that you really have a guy that can drive in runs and do so many things with the bat and you move him down into the three hole. Sometimes when you bounce guys around and then they get successful you can't, you can't do anything but stick with it. Strike to Jose Peraza. Good looking young player for the Reds can play all over the infield little bit of outfield. Hitless though in this series 0 for 7. Brandon Phillips. That deal to Atlanta opened up the door at second base for Peraza. He signed as an international free agent with the Braves, spent time with L.A., and was in the Todd Frazier deal, three-team trade. In Atlanta, though, blocked by, at the time, Andrelton Simmons. So now with Phillips gone, the idea would be that he could be an everyday second baseman or even a shortstop, depending on what happens with Zach Cozart. Reds have a promising young prospect for second base Dilson Herrera and he was a part of the Jay Bruce deal 2 2 
little tapper that rolls foul. Kind of a good problem to have. Kind of guy who's in the big leagues and can play anywhere and anywhere and play the position well. And then you got people coming up right behind him. So it's one thing that talking to Walt Jockety the other day said something about when you're going to make a deal, even if it's the benefit of, let's say, the Matt Adams deal or any kind of deal that kind of comes up last minute. You got to get something that you're going to uh, use in the future. You know, sometimes you just don't make a trade just because you want to free up a guy. He said sometimes you have to go against your gut instinct on letting a guy go because you might need him down the line. Because I asked him, I was like, do you ever feel sorry for a guy who's stuck in an organization? And he said, no, you really can't look at it that way. You really have to use him as a commodity. And you're going to let a guy like that go. You got to get something in return. It's sharply left side spinning Jerko up nice play takes a hit away from Barraza and with that there's two down nice little play by Jed right here just nice low center of gravity getting that ball throwing a strike over to first base and sometimes those day games are tough on the infielders especially with that cement wall back there ball blends in a little bit. Here's Tucker Barnhart, switch hitter. Fastball misses outside. 268, one home run. He's driven in six. Mike Lee comes into today's start, third in the league in ERA, 2.64, trailing only Max Scherzer and Clayton Kershaw. Kershaw now at 2.20. Lance Lynn, after last night's start, is sixth in the National League. ERA under three. Looked to be a pretty good pitch. Let's tap foul. RBI Baseball 2017 returns with fast paced pick up and play MLB action all your favorite teams and players learn more at RBI game dot com. The 2 2. Three two pitch is pulled foul. And a souvenir for that young man. Schools are out. Crowds are bigger around the game right now. Kids coming down to the ballpark. Eighth pitch of this at bat. We'll go to a ninth. I was a little surprised when I saw the crowd. Today versus the last couple of nights, you would think that you would see a smaller crowd during the middle of the week at 12:35 than the last couple of nights. Three-two pitch, lined into center field and a base hit. I think where Leak is frustrated is on the one-two pitch. Got called a ball. Looked to be a very good pitch, and he never really shows up an umpire or ever a teammate, but he kind of looked back into Bill Welke and wondered, all right, where's that pitch? You look at the Fox tracks right there. He pretty much threw everything he had in his arsenal in, out, up, down, and then had to finally throw a pitch over the plate and got a jam shot for a base hit. But you're right. It's like you make a good pitch. You want to get that out, get it over with. Scott Feldman is now 0 for 21 on the year bouncing back to Mike Leak. Coming up for the Cardinals Diaz DeYoung and Leak. There's no score.
St. Louis Cardinals baseball is brought to you by Steel Outdoor Power Equipment. Find a servicing steel dealer at steeldealers.com or search STIHL. And by your local St. Louis area Volkswagen dealers. I love you, partner. But if I had my chance, I'd be right there on that boat. Well, just go ahead. That is all me right there, buddy. You know how I like the water. Can you imagine? Just nice Thursday afternoon, cruising right up the river. It would actually be a pretty special place if this was kind of like wide open, like in the old days they had. Like in, in, when I was growing up in Angel, Angel Stadium, you could drive past the stadium on, on the freeway and see into the ballpark. It's kind of cool. Here's Diaz, lines it to left, and the catch is made. Duvall came in, had to go back in, makes the catch. Or you could just pull up your boat in Pittsburgh at PNC and park, get out, get your ticket, and check out a baseball it's not game. Not so bad either. San Francisco? Yep. It's too bad you can't really see into the ballpark from the water. So Feldman has retired the first seven he's seen. The rookie now, Paul DeYoung, had a double last night down to the third base line. Feldman, originally a 30th round selection by Texas in 2003, debuted with the Rangers in 05. In 2003, Delman Young was the first overall pick. That's Dimitri's brother. And Dimitri played for both the Cardinals and Reds. You may recall that St. Louis traded Dimitri Young to Cincinnati for Jeff Brantley. Now works for the Reds on their radio broadcasts. He was insurance behind Dennis Eckersley. Two one pitch. Cowboy. There he is. He's probably got his cowboy boots on right now. On the right, Jeff Brantley. Jim Kelch on the left. Three one pitch. How to play. 2003, the Cardinals drafted Derek Barton, who had success in Oakland, and he was part of the uh, Mark Mulder deal. Brought the big lefty to St. Louis. 3 2. Last time the Cardinals played seven games on a road trip and lost all seven was 2007. Doesn't happen very often. We'll be back home tomorrow night. Cardinals will take on the Phillies and the Reds head out west. Weekend series with the Dodgers. Feldman a nice play. Underhands to Votto. June 15th it's the U.S. Open you can see that on Fox FS1 streaming live on Fox Sports Go June 15th from Aaron Hills. Here's Mike Leake Reds know that he can swing the bat this year batting just 160. One ball and one strike. League four for 25 this year. You look at Mike Leake, not a big guy, not imposing, but yet 
great athlete and can swing the bat. Just going to say, you get a good pitching lesson. You watch these two guys today. Both of them do not throw the ball up in the zone very often. And you see right there another good pitch down and away, but it just goes to show you the velocity is not always um, everything. Look at, you don't really see the ball in the upper half of the strike zone from either one of these two guys. A little bit of movement going in both directions. Just get some ground balls and keep working through the onion. Tough play here, and that's Peraza showing off the glove. Scott Feldman, nine up, nine down, and helping his own cause. Little glove work. Lee and Feldman could be fun today. Fans enjoying a little sunshine. Beautiful day here in Cincinnati. Maybe not even taking in the game. <laughs> As Jim Hayes likes to say, fellowship. Oh, Kia no. in the driver's seat. Last two seasons against Cincinnati. Last year, tough going for Mike Leake. Four starts, seven. 0.25 ERA and this year 1.29 and that's your Kia in the driver's seat. Here's Billy Hamilton showing bunt and looks at a strike. We're underway here in the bottom of the third. Leak is averaging only 14 pitches per inning. That's fifth fewest in the major leagues. That's a reason why he stays and goes deep into these games. He's gone deep into a number of his starts this year. Last ball game pitched into the seventh. Kyle Schwarber, a grand slam. Let me guess, in the seventh. Yes, sir. <laughs> Lucky number seven. He's given up three home runs. And they've all been backbreakers too in the seventh inning. Adonis Garcia, three run homer for Atlanta. Jackie Bradley Jr., a two run homer. Leak gloves, throws, and makes the play. And then Schwarber's grand slam over the weekend. Mike Matheny asked about uh, his decision to pull Lance Lynn and you know, we said at the time, you never know what's going on down there. Maybe something was affecting him, but he said, no, we were just going for offense, and they did pick up a run, but you're asking your bullpen to get 12 outs. Didn't work out. It's the hard thing about the managerial spot is whatever move you make, you're going to get second guessed, and then, of course, 
one doesn't go right. Makes it even tougher, but you can only throw the players out there and hope that they perform and feel like this year whatever button he pushes sometimes just isn't working out for him and it's making him look like he's struggling, you know, and it's just really sometimes you look at it from the front office down even with the general manager. I mean you put a good team on the field, you throw your manager out there and you, you have a good spring training and all of a sudden things just don't work the way you thought they were going to work and so you can't really regroup. You can't just throw everybody out the window and start over because no one's going to help you out so to speak during the beginning of the season. You got to figure it out. Strike out of Cozart he's 0 for 2. And with baseball it's such a grind. You know here we were less than 24 hours ago. Watching that late innings unfold and really collapse for the Cardinals but with baseball the next day you got to you got to get ready. You got to get ready to play. Yeah you really just can't let it linger. And that's what we were talking about last night. And for me when I was saying like you can't allow yourself to be that team of guys that says oh here we go again. Like you have to figure out a way to change it. You got to be someone's got to be that guy to step up and say I'm not allowing this to happen tonight or I'm going to be the guy that starts the rally this inning and, and, and really try to reverse all of that negativity. Here's a one one. Check swing again by Votto. Did you talk much hitting with Joey when you were here? Joey doesn't talk much. Uh, he, <laughs> not kidding, but no, not really. He he really is. He, he sticks to himself, and that's why I think when we talked about him helping out the younger players this year, it was a pretty big story because he's notorious for just kind of sitting there and concentrating on his own gig and going about his business. Votto is two for two. Both hits to center field. Brings in Adam Duvall. He singled to right first time up. So Leak has struck out two, has not walked a man. He's given up four hits. Duvall, very good numbers against Leak. Time is called by Yadier Molina. Cincinnati a year ago they finished up 68 and 94 but they were one game under 500 in the second half of the season. The first half they were 32 and 57. And some big names were gone. Cueto Bruce Leak. Ground ball left side deep in the hole Diaz no play. A little bit of maturity right there, maybe out of Diaz. I think maybe last year he might have tried to throw that ball. Those are kind of the things to talk about as as you progress. You have to realize when you make that play and when not to, because you throw that ball away, that can start that. Oh my gosh, here we go again, feeling and just a nice play that you have to just eat that ball right there and just take what the game gives you and go to the next hitter and try to get another ground ball. Here's Scott Shebler. After the base hit by Duvall, he came up with runners at first and third in the first, grounded out to second. Another home run last night. He's already hit four against the Cardinals this year. Off the end of the bat to Leak. Steps and throws. Red Strand, two. They've left five on. We head to the fourth. Cincinnati and St. Louis. The top of the lineup coming up. And there's no score from the Great American Ballpark.
and the Reds. T-Mobile unlimited baseball break. Clayton Kershaw yesterday against Steven Strasburg. Seven innings, three hits, struck out nine. And the Rockies have won four straight. Up next, they'll be at Wrigley Field. T-Mobile unlimited baseball break. Rockies are 38 and 23. Two game lead over Arizona and Los Angeles. Milwaukee one game lead in the central over Chicago. Cincinnati three back the Cardinals four and a half Pittsburgh five and a half. And Washington an 11 and a half game lead over Atlanta and the Mets. Let's see what type of adjustments Feldman's makes and also the lineup of the Cardinals second time through. Carpenter bounced into the shift rounded out his first time up. One ball and two strikes. Get out of play. Two two again. Carpenter base hit into center in the first Cardinal hit. Jimmy he was saying the other day he felt that he was underneath and behind on a lot of his swings. Yeah and I was just watching Feldman right there is making his mad at himself as threw that fastball inside with two strikes and it ran back over the plate but Matt's been battling a little little tinkering with some things here and there and said he was at one point he was getting his back turned to the pitcher too much which was causing him to be a little bit longer to the ball and and last night or two nights ago I was talking to some of the scouts and they thought he was on his heels too much and that's because he was trying to fix the part where he was turning so much and maybe over exaggerating it now he's back on his heels and trying to stay flat. I think sometimes like we saw last night with the swing it got a little shorter. Sometimes the guys that move the ball around and you just got to sit there and wait to see what he's going to throw you is a good thing for a hitter when you're struggling like this instead of just getting a flamethrower out there when you're trying to catch up the fastballs all day long. Going to the count on Fowler. He has eight home runs, all eight from this side of the plate. Seven of the eight have given the Cardinals a lead at some point. Short lead at first by Carpenter. Only one stolen base this year. In the dirt and kept in front by Barnhart. Scott Feldman was in the game that uh, so many of us remember. Game six of the 2011 World Series. And it really was such a bad game for so long. There were five errors, pick off at third, two wild pitches, two pass balls. Slowly hit to the right side off the bat of Fowler. And yet, it turned out to be one of the great games in World Series history. And Feldman was on the mound, one out away from sending the Cardinals home and winning the World Series. Lance Berkman, a base hit in the 10th. Cardinals were trailing at that point, 9 to 8. That would score John Jay, and they'd win the game thanks to David Freeze, 10 to 9. One of the most remarkable games in the history of baseball. Here's Piscotti. Right now you can make a case he's the Cardinals hottest hitter. And a pitch low and outside. 
It's fun. Talk about having a couple of days off will do for you. Steven had to go home for a few days, come back, and I think he's been pretty much hitting ever since. And that little break is, I mean, we talk about taking a day off, but that two-day break for some reason is like so much better than having one day. I don't think you can really fully grasp what's going on with the one day. And that's why you see a lot of guys sitting out the day game before a off day, get that extra day. I would take that chance, and I wouldn't even touch the bat or the ball for the entire day. And then you have the off day, you go home and feel like a new person. It's weird how that works. Those numbers brought to you by BJC. The difference maker. Here's a 1 1 pitch inside. Two one is hit down the left field line, but foul. Right now, the Cardinals in the midst of their second longest losing streak under Mike Matheny, the longest a seven game skid back in July of 2013. The 2 2 pitch breaks his bat, slowly hit to Votto. Feldman covering the bag at first, advancing to third, Carpenter, and there's two away. You can see he's sneaky, hiding the ball, cutting the ball, running the ball. He's giving these guys fits today and Getting a lot of contact with jam shots, and he's been making some really good pitches in off the plate. Sometimes when you're trying to hit against a guy where you know he's only throwing 90, you try to like load up a little bit and try to provide some more power, or you take advantage knowing that he's not throwing that hard, and that's when you get yourself in trouble. And you see a little bit of run here, sink there, really handcuffing a few of these guys. So two outs, runner at third. And the batter is Jed Jericho. Outfield deep straight away. First pitch is swung on and missed. Jericho first time up grounded out to short. The 2006 Cardinals had a seven game losing streak. And two eight game losing streaks. Just trying to make it exciting. Well you did. That's for sure. Here's the 0 1. This time last year, Jed Jerko, Cardinals trying to figure out where to put him, get him some at bats, keep him sharp, primarily against lefties. And he pops 30 home runs, and now the everyday cleanup man. Another cutter right there. It's like it's going to be a fastball away and that's what I'm talking about. That's the ball that a lot of guys right handers throwing to lefties. You don't want that ball to run back over the plate. And same kind of thing when you're throwing to righties especially a guy with power. You want to be able to keep the ball on that side of the plate. You don't want to miss and have that ball run back over the heart. You have to determine as a hitter. As soon as he lets go of the ball, which way it's going to go. And guys that predominantly a sinker ball pitcher or a guy that gets good run, you're expecting that ball to run back at you. And then by the time you start to swing and realize it's a cutter, it's too late. So two and two the count. Swing and a miss and a strikeout for Feldman. His third of the day. He's allowed just one hit, the single to Carpenter. We're scoreless here in Cincinnati.
For him offensively starting to turn around a bit with more on that let's check in with Jim Dan as you pointed out a very good road trip for Steven offensively as well seven hits six walks back to back multi hit games he told me the main thing is avoiding the trap of trying to do too much and to not worry about what people are saying so you can stay positive he told me he's made a slight mechanical change in his swing which allows him to see the ball better he also said mentally He's in a good place considering the circumstances. He said he's always thinking about his mom Gretchen. He told me what she is going through really put this game and life in perspective for him. Well there's no doubt base hit by Scooter Jeanette. I think of concern right now with Biscotti has been his defense which is surprising. I mean Steven had the ball in Chicago that got away on Sunday night. He also had a game one. One that was lost in the sun. Normally a very reliable defensive player, but things happen. Base hit by Scooter Jeanette. He's one for two. The oddity of the other night with Scooter was that. He had never hit four home runs in any month, <laughs> month of his major league career. Not a game, but a month. Not a game. Remember the second swing of the the fourth home run at bat. He basically went to his knees. Remember that? Came out said, of his shoes. Yes. Well, we thought he did, and he said actually what happened was and that ball scoots away, but. Jeanette stays put. He said his batting glove was coming off the bat, and so when he was trying to swing, everything was out of whack. Back out way out in front because the ball, uh, the bat was coming out of his hands, and that's when he went down <laughs> on a knee. It's the one way to slow him down, right there. Just pick over and throw it at his legs. Yeah, you know what's funny is sometimes too. I, I thought that he got his cleat caught. You know, we make fun that guys got three home runs, and of course he's going to try to hit another one, but. You always try to keep it under control and you see that swing and you think oh he's going for it. but I kind of thought he just got stuck. Base hit into left. Peraza and the first two are aboard. It's a weird dynamic sitting up here doing Cardinals baseball watching that unfold. Can't help but sometimes think kind of cool in a way to see history. But yet at the time. Obviously don't want to see any more runs across the board for the Reds. Your baseball fan pretty neat moment. Yeah for sure. Only 17 have done it. Here's Tucker Barnhart. Well Leak certainly can get out of this inning. You think about the double play and then Feldman who's 0 for 21 on the year coming up after Barnhart. To pitch out of a jam. Runners at first and second. Been in plenty of those meetings on the mound. Stuff starts to get out of control. And pitching coach would literally just walk out there and just say, hey, you're one pitch away from getting out of this inning, or one pitch away from, you know, getting a double play, and like you said, facing the pitcher. So you can never really get too wrapped up in what's behind you. It's almost what's going forward and what you're going to do with what you have in front of you. 2 and 0 the count. My rookie year, I played first base with the Angels. JT Snow got sent down. And the first thing I do remember is running out on the field. Right before I ran out on the field for the first time, our coach said, Hey, uh, just remember, Finley and Langston don't like to talk, so don't go to the mound. <laughs> I was like, Thanks. Don't I'll remember you, that. Don't huh? go out there no matter what. So then when the coach goes to the mound, I'm almost afraid to even go over there when he's there. 3 0 pitch. And a walk. Bases are loaded. This weekend and this Saturday, the Ritz kick off to summer weekend at Bush Stadium. Cardinals take on the Phillies, 30,000 fans, 16 and older. Get a fashion boost with a one of a kind Cardinals all over print shirt. Don't miss out. Cardinals.com slash promotions. 
back to back singles Jeanette Barraza now walk to Barnhart they're loaded for Feldman. And there's a strike. I'd like to see uh, an at bat like the first time. Maybe this time instead of a 1 3, I'd like to see maybe a 1 2 3 double play. Well, Scott Feldman against St. Louis, including today, has now thrown 10 innings. No runs against everybody else. 59 and two thirds this season. 33 earned runs in an ERA near five. Oh, and two the count. talk about positioning of outfielders especially when you're on these games and you look at Tommy Pham with the pitcher up hitting from this side of the plate might be too deep. Yeah, I'd like to see them all move in a little bit if it was up to me especially Tommy. O2 pitch and he struck him out. That's a good pitch right there a good cutter. That's what I'm talking about when you're a hitter you have to make you know you see this pitch inside and like the old Greg Maddox back door or front door fastball you know it's coming and so you got to cheat a little bit to get to it and then you get that one which is the cutter and it goes the other direction and end up swinging a pitch that's almost behind you by the time it's done not fun. This could be a very important at bat in this game when we look back on it because the infield is in the speed of Hamilton base is loaded. A lot of hitting lanes for him. This is one of those times too as an infielder I think you got to really pay attention to what's going on on the field and not necessarily have to get the double play but have to get an out. And so you might just try to cut down the run at the plate knowing how well Billy Hamilton runs. Here's the one. One ball one strike. Molina and the home plate umpire Bill Welke having a conversation. Hamilton. Didn't go after it and Leak looking back in to see. Hey where's this pitch. I like to have this pitch right here even though it's right on the edge. Just such a good pitch. He's been making good pitches just not getting anything out of them. The two one three and one you watch closely he's been throwing everything out there both sides of the plate balls running on tailing one time cutting the other time he's in a change up in the breaking ball he's trying to bounce the breaking ball he's doing everything he has to try to get through these innings three and two. Including today, 78 innings for Mike Leak and only 13 walks. Ground ball, that's fair. Steps on the bag. Molina applies the tag. It's a double play. Huge double play turned by Matt Carpenter and the Cardinals. Stepped on the bag. The tag on Jeanette and the Cardinals and Leak out of a jam. No score as we head to inning number five.
team that's struggling a play like that maybe jump starts this club momentum maybe shifting a little bit that's a really big play actually and, and, and I walked away after that inning thinking I couldn't have been a more perfect double play in that situation and like I talked about like you have to think through that stuff in the inning especially because of Hamilton's running anyone else you don't worry about it but because of that guy running extra pressure on the defense and to get that kind of double play is, is perfect and like you said hopefully turn some things around get out of play one ball and one strike Danny that could have been that situation right there that here we go again yes you know even if let's say that ball hits the bag or there's not a guy uh, you know carp's not playing in just a bloop single anything and it can really ruin the locker room and a base hit for Yadier Molina the Cardinals second hit of the afternoon that's how we start play here in inning number five the State Farm double play started by Carpenter he steps on the bag so then Molina has to apply the tag well done So here's Tommy Pham grounded out to second. 0 for 1 today. Pham, the fly ball into right. Shepler is there. Molina back to the bag at first, and there's one away. Even there, that late run, just enough to jam Tommy Pham, and that's what you've been talking about all day. And, now, and now, that brings up another point too. It's when you don't know which way the ball is going to go you tend to wait just a little bit longer and try to see before you react and sometimes like right there you wait a little too long to attack instead of really start your swing and then make the decision to either hold up or go after it you kind of wait a little too long to, to make the decision to swing at it and then you get jammed. That's why hitting is so ridiculously tough I mean it's 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 literally keeps you up at night thinking of all the different things that could that have and could go possibly wrong during the course of a game. Here's the one pitch to it led Miss Diaz. You one of those guys that went back to the hotel room got in front of the mirror looked at the stance the setup. <laughs> There's guys that do it all the no time. No chance. <laughs> you were not one of those guys. No but I would come out the next day at one o'clock and hit for an hour straight. Yeah. Until I couldn't hit anymore. He used to chase me off the field some days. He was like, hey, that's enough already. Like, go inside and relax. Here's a 1 1 instead of check on Yadier Molina. Molina and Pham lead the club in stolen bases with five apiece. I know you know this, but it might shock you. I didn't like to really watch myself. I didn't really like to look in the mirror and see and then I always thought oh my stance looks weird or this is, doesn't look right and that play with your head even more. Catch made by Votto two down. If you can't catch the games on television you can stream them live on your mobile device with Fox Sports Go download the app take Fox Sports Midwest and Cardinals baseball with you wherever you go. Now Carpenter is one of those guys he'll go back to the hotel and look at his hands look at his setup and he's not the only one there's a lot of players that do that. I remember when guys would bring a guy would be carrying a bat out of the locker room onto the bus I'm like what the heck are you doing. Oh you know I'd like to just kind of check it out when I get home at night I'm like spend all day at the ballpark sometimes you get here at one o'clock on the road. You don't leave until 11 o'clock at night. You got enough time right there to go in the in the back room and look in the mirror. Can of imagine going at home and doing that in your hotel room. Strike two to Young. One ball, one strike. Bounce back to Feldman first time up. Be a really good time for a homer for him. Okay. 
De Young pops it up. Barnhart near the screen and just enough room. Makes the play. Cardinal Strand, their second runner of the afternoon. Pitcher's duel with Feldman and Leak. Starts tomorrow on that day 30,000 fans 16 and older take home a bobblehead of the 1967 National League MVP Orlando Cepeda courtesy of AAA cards and fills cardinals.com slash promotions huge double play with the bases loaded one out back in the bottom of the fourth to end the inning off the bat of Billy Hamilton so now Leak starts fresh here in the fifth we are scoreless from the Great American Ballpark. Jim Edmonds, Dan McLaughlin here in the booth. Also, Jim Hayes is with us. Right here in the booth. Here's Zach Cozart. Grounded out to short, also struck out. Came into play today. Second in the National League in on base percentage at 436. Behind Buster Posey. The seventh in hits with 67. Charlie Blackman with 83 of the Rockies to lead in the senior circuit. He leads the Reds in triples and doubles. He's had a magnificent start to his year. Fly ball to left. Catch made by Fam. So here we are again, Jimmy. One of these games that looks like it's going to be tight going late. And the Cardinals, they have gotten great starting pitching. Seventh inning or later, we talked about it. The high ERA. And trying to finish off games. And a base hit for Joey Votto. Three for three. You know there's another aspect to that too is what we're looking at it's obvious right now Cardinals only have two hits so they've been struggling a little bit scoring runs that puts added pressure on the pitcher because now he can't he's pitching trying not to make a mistake and so that wears on you over time and like the magic number jokingly is in the seventh inning but think about you're pitching six innings of basically a tight ball game and mentally it's got to be a little taxing and so you know, I think all that they really need is to get some runs early so the pitchers can coast. You saw yesterday what at Lance Lynn was doing with the lead. Drive into left center field. Votto racing to third. They'll wave him in. They miss the cut. Votto will score, and it's 1 0 Cincinnati. Adam Duvall drives in his 46th, and it's 1 0 Reds.
I mean, ex this is kind of exactly what I'm talking about right here. You know, you go after Joey Votto, he gets a hit, and you're literally one pitch away. Now it's one nothing. And it's just, it's a stressful environment for the pitchers to go out there knowing that they could only give up one run, two runs, and they're going to come out of a game losing. If the relay is sharper, I think they may yeah, have had a lead. You're right. He might have had a chance for him. Joy Bottle wasn't really running with some serious conviction right there. I don't think he really thought he was going to score. Now Shebler hit by the pitch. Inning started with a line out by Cozart, single by Votto, RBI double by Duvall. Now Shebler hit by this pitch. Brings in Scooter Jeanette. He was born here in Cincinnati. By the age of nine, he moved to Sarasota, Florida to play baseball year round. And he's talked about playing for his hometown team, a dream come true. He's with Milwaukee. Till the very end of spring training. Released in, the Reds picked him up. One for two today, struck out back in the second, and a single to right in the fourth. Here's the 0 1. I think Scooter Jeanette might have overthought that first pitch right there. I think swinging the bat the way he's been swinging it and knowing you're probably going to get a sinker, I got to take my chances right there. I don't know what he may be thinking by trying to bunt the ball, but sometimes, like I said, you make the game a little harder than it is. And I think he just tried to catch Jed Jerko off guard, but he's been swinging the bat pretty well. I take the chances with the bat. No question. O2 pitch lined in the right field for a base hit. Run will score, and it's now two nothing Cincinnati. Jeanette the other night when he hit that. Fourth home run that was on an 0-2 pitch and he singles to right drives in his 31st and what a series he's had. Derek Lilliquist the Cardinals pitching coach out to visit runners at first and third and still only one out. Pretty good chance he went out there and said, hey, just one pitch away from getting out of this. Stay with it. Jose Peraza grounded out to third, also a base hit to left field. Strike one. Pitch count at 78 for Mike Leak. Originally drafted by the Reds, never spent a day in the minor leagues, made the jump to the big leagues. And the 0 1. It's not often that you see a pitcher with a single digit. <laughs> Leak wearing number eight for the Cardinals. I was trying to think of when I saw him the first time this year, number eight. Infielders. 
Yeah. Hal McCray maybe was the hitting coach. Gary, Gary Gaetti. But then, I don't know if Gary Gaetti was here with number eight because I think he was in Anaheim for a year or two with that number. But it is an oddball. I saw him walk by the first time and I was like, what the heck? What are you doing? Year two of his five year contract with the Cardinals. And the one two runner goes throw by Molina's into center field. The sixth air this season for Yadier Molina. And it makes it a three nothing Cincinnati lead. Way he threw that ball, Jimmy, it makes me think that. I, I mean, this is rare when you see I this, don't but know he's if thinking I've that. Ever seen this. I just wonder if he's thinking that someone's cutting in front of the bag, which you'll see the Cardinals do an awful lot of with a runner at third. I don't know if I've ever seen Yadi Molina make a throw like that. That was really bizarre. Swing and a miss. Strike out of Peraza. Six times on this current road trip, the Cardinals have allowed four or more runs in an inning. Intentional pass to Barnhart. And Scott Feldman, who is 0 for 2 and 0 for 22 this year, will be the batter. I don't think I've ever seen Molina do that and it, it makes me think then that something went awry and how they were designing that play. You never know. Many times the middle infielder in this case to young would be on the grass receiving that throw so the throw may go through past the pitcher but he's there. But that ball just sailed on Yachty. Or it could be just one of those things where he's not on top of the ball and it sailed. I was trying to look at the replay to see if he just didn't get his feet to where he normally gets and then tried to make a play. And, you know, we talk about it a lot trying to do too much, trying to make up for all the mistakes that are going on on the field. And because he's the captain, he's trying to make a play. Two strikeouts for Leak, but three runs for the Reds. We head to the sixth. St. Louis Cardinals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the St. Louis Cardinals.
Scott Feldman back to work here in the sixth inning. Lead now of three to nothing for the Reds. Now time for AARP's getting to know Scott Feldman. Taught how to throw a changeup while working at a grocery store by his manager. I saw that in the notes today that we were going to talk about that. And I almost feel like I was watching a movie, like when they, when you're reading the teleprompter and they put something out there just to see if you'll read it. <laughs> I was like, surely that can't be true. I was thinking to myself, I'm not reading that. <laughs> so you left it up to me. Yeah. Cardinals will use a pinch hitter. And it's Chad Huffman. Cardinals option John Gant, right handed pitcher, back to the minor leagues prior to yesterday's game. And Huffman was called up. He's 32. This is his first major league appearance since his debut with the Yankees in 2010. Good for him. A lot of years in the minor leagues. 12th season professionally. 53rd overall pick by the Padres out of TCU. High school college teammate of Matt Carpenter. Month of May, Huffman was hitting 317 with a couple of home runs and had driven in 11. But at the highest on base percentage in all of AAA. 469. So he earned the call up. The 1 1. Saw a lot of Chad in spring training, played a little outfield, some first base. Second season in the Cardinals organization. Three and one. So for Mike Leake, he will not pitch six innings, and uh, first time he doesn't go into the sixth this year. Little bouncer that's hit to second base. Peraza makes the play. First out near in the top of the sixth. What a great deal on Cardinals tickets. Fill up at Phillips 66, eight gallons or more. Now until September 25th, receive up to 50% off on a pair of tickets to a Cardinals home game. For more information, visit cardinals.com slash Phillips 66. Carpenter one for two base hit to center that was back in the fourth first pitch a strike Kubota power stats high slugging percentage leadoff hitter since 1914 quite a list Soriano Blackman Carpenter Sizemore and Bobby Bonds. Here's a 1 1 pitch. Two and one the count. And the next two Carpenter. Hits it down the right field line. It is hooking and foul. can even see there that Feldman is just doing a really good job of keeping everyone off balance. It's nothing straight, nothing's the same speed. Guys are either early, late, swinging at balls that end up out of the zone, down. There's really nothing that explodes, and no one's had to chase a pitch up in the zone. Just moving the ball around and keeping them off balance. The 2 2. 
Got a piece of it, but held on to by Tucker Barnard. Strikeout for Feldman is number four. Margaritaville night is Friday, June 23rd. Purchase of a special theme ticket. Fans receive a Margaritaville inspired Cardinals t shirt. There's a pregame concert, and those tickets can be yours at cardinals.com slash theme. So four strikeouts for the right handers. Scott Feldman has not walked a man, and he's allowed just two base hits. Dexter Fowler. Strike one. Called out on strikes back in the first and also rounded out to second. Feldman is pitched with Texas, the Cubs, Baltimore, Houston, Toronto. Back in 2014, he was the Daryl Kyle Award winner in Houston. That means an awful lot to so many players. Last year in St. Louis, it went to Jonathan Broxton. And the 1 1. Fowler hits it the other way, but. The ball is there and Feldman is through six only two hits allowed Tyler Lyons coming on when we come back. What's on tap presented by Budweiser back home tomorrow night. Jeremy Hellickson against Michael Waka will come your way at 630 with the pregame show. And it's our Budweiser what's on tap. Michael Waka trying to get back on track in that start tomorrow night. Reds with 10 hits off of Mike Leak. Five innings three runs struck out five. Two walks one of those intentional. And the Cardinals turn it over now to Tyler Lyons. Billy Hamilton hits 222 from this side of the plate, 261 the other side. Hits it down the right field line and out of play. And this is our Chevy called to the pen. Hamilton is 0 for 3, grounded out to second, grounded back to Leak in the third. Base is loaded, inning ending double play. That was in the fourth. With the struggles of Brett Cecil, and they're very cautious with how much they use Kevin Segrist. You saw the numbers there against lefties, only 182 against Tyler Lyons. Makes you wonder would you start using him in those 
higher leverage situations. Well, I'll tell you what, he's definitely going to get a chance because what they've been throwing out there hasn't been working out the way they wanted it to, and he's been doing his job. So it's funny, like Matt Bowman a couple years ago or last year, kind of just sneaks his way up, and the next thing you know, he's throwing in the seventh inning in big situations, and then off he go. Good breaking ball and a strikeout catches the corner. Missouri Lottery Fox tracks. He has got that nasty breaking ball. <laughs> See Billy Hamilton look back like, Are you serious? <laughs> Here's Zach Ozart, hitless today. Little bouncer up the middle, backhanded by DeYoung, and the throw is offline and off the glove of Carpenter. Ruled a base hit for Zach Cozart. It's like that base hit. Talk about getting your feet set all the time, and you can see right here. Kind of got his feet set nice and calmly, but then he tried to rush the throw with his arm, and that's when the ball tails on you. Did everything right there at the end, but just didn't stay aggressive with his body. Joey Votto, three for three. And Votto hits it a ton out to deep right field. Piscotti back, and it's gone. Five nothing Cincinnati. Votto four for four on the day. Home run number 16 RBIs 47 and 48. Does it so effortless? Short swing, doesn't even really finish it. Your head on the ball and just bam. The breaking ball alliance, I think maybe you question, and it's hindsight 2020, but you throw the fastball to Votto. When you think of Tyler Lyons, you think of a great breaking ball that he possesses. Well, right, just like that. You look back at Joey Votto's at bats too and against the relievers. He's looking for that first fastball to hit. He doesn't want to get to those specialty pitchers because usually that second pitch from a reliever is a devastating breaking ball, change up split. So if he sees a fastball first pitch, he's going to let it go. So Votto and Duvall combined seven for seven. Five singles, double home run, two runs scored, three RBIs. And the 0-2 pitch missed in. And the one two strikeout on the inside corner. The batter will be Scott Shebler. Two strikeouts for Lions. Shebler hit by a pitch back in the fifth, grounded back to the pitcher, and also grounded out to second base. On the year, batting 250. There's that good breaking ball against the lefty. Cardinals now with a strike on Shebler shifting with three on the right side of the infield. A one pitch. A little bit high.
Racing out for it, it's Diaz, and he puts it away. Two run homer by Joey Votto, his 16th of the year. He's four for four. And a 5 0 Cincinnati lead. Hit a home run. The Gateway Honda dealers donate a thousand dollars to the Make a Wish Foundation of Missouri. And the Cardinals will have Piscotti, Jerko, and Molina. Five nothing the score, top of the seventh. And one of the stories today, Scott Feldman, just how well he has pitched. Only two hits allowed. He has struck out four. And Piscotti pulls it foul for strike one. Off the end of the bat and out of play. Well, you've been mentioning how Feldman has kept the Cardinals off balance. That last pitch, a good example. It's just a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Little add, little subtract. Ball's down, though. Everything's down and going both directions. It's like a little bit of, and you know the height might come into play, too, because sometimes when you get a big, tall pitcher, you expect him to throw hard. Like a little bit of Greg Maddox. You know, he's just kind of moving the ball around and he's giving you the same pitch to hit. But it's going a different direction every time he throws it. We showed the replay in the pitch that Piscotti was out in front. That was on the outer half of the plate. Then he comes in with a fastball running in on his hands. So one and two of the count. And the next two, Steven Piscotti. There's a base hit into left center field. Cut off by Hamilton. Piscotti will stop at first base. Hamilton leads the National League with six outfield assists. Might be one of the few pitches of the day that kind of stayed up a little bit. You can see that ball's just above the knees, and Scotty doing a good job of sticking with it, staying with it, trying to go up the middle. Brings in Jed Jerko. He's 0 for 2 on the day. They start to stretch now in that Cincinnati bullpen. Pitch count at 91 for Feldman. Cardinals have been shut out only three times this year. One of those games was April 9th in St. Louis, and Feldman was on the mound. Six innings, four hits, struck out six in that game. 
And the 1 0 pitch to Jed Jerko. In the air, out to right. Shebler near the line. Makes the catch. One away. Molina is one for two. Cardinals did not get a base hit until the fourth. That was Matt Carpenter. He was left stranded. Molina base hit in the fifth. He was left stranded. And now a leadoff single by Piscotti. One out. And here's Yachty. Even there, a pitch with purpose. You get a right hander to roll over on it, and that's a double play. Chevy Fox tracks. Exactly what he's trying to do right there is he's trying to throw a ball with sink, make you reach for it. Basically just to hit it to the hit it to the shortstop of the second baseman for a ground ball double play. Two balls and no strikes. John Brebia is getting loose, the right hander for the Cardinals in their pen. Austin Bryce, a right hander for the Reds, has started to throw in their pen. The 2 0. Molina, base hit into left. So, two on, and it brings in Tommy Pham. Pitching coach Mac Jenkins 31st year in the Reds organization and now the pitching coach here in Cincinnati. the pitch count right there pretty consistent day by Scott Feldman so far other than that one inning with 20 pitches everything's been in the 10 to 15 range keeping the ball on the ground last home run for Tommy Pham most recent road trip that was in Colorado runners at first and second No balls, two strikes. But you look at that pitch count, and the majority of these pitches have been when he's ahead in the count, too. You know, he's been pitching ahead, a lot of strike lot one. Of strikes. Yeah, that's a good call, and that's a major difference in pitching ahead and pitching behind. Big gap in left center, and the 0 2 pitch to the Cardinals' left fielder inside. This weekend the Cardinals have Waka going tomorrow. Carlos Martinez on Saturday Adam Wainwright on Sunday. Here's a one two pitch to fam. Little bouncer hit to short double play ball six four three on the double play. And the threat is through for St. Louis time to stretch five nothing Cincinnati.
Positive Coaching Alliance and its mission to develop better athletes, better people by working to provide all youth and high school athletes a positive character building sports experience. Visit FoxSportsSupports.com and you'll learn more. John Brebbia, right-hander for the Cardinals, third pitcher used in this game for St. Louis. And it is our Chevy called to the pen. Fifth appearance. He's done a nice job so far. Cardinals let go of both Jonathan Broxton and Miguel Sokolovich. And a chance for Brebbia. I like about Brebbia is it's got a little movement, but velocity's been good 93 to 95, sometimes a few 96s, but a good breaking ball. Got a chance to be a good good pitcher here, especially when he gets opportunities to pitch more and more. Make the best out of it. A swing and a miss by Scooter Jeanette. He's two for three, two singles, and an RBI. Outfield straight away. And a fly ball into left field. Tommy Pham wants it. First out. Jose Barraza is one for three, grounded out to third, single to left, and struck out back in inning number five. One pitch. Fly ball lifted to Tommy Pham. So Brebby has come in and retired the first two. Tucker Barnhart and he looks at ball one. See that little girl in the front row now she's having some fun. Jumping up and down and why not her Reds. Have a five nothing lead as we head to the eighth Brebbia. A one two three five nothing our score. There's that little cutie.
Ball to the pen is Austin Bryce. Acquired from the Marlins, along with a right-handed pitcher, Luis Castillo. That was the Dan Straley deal. Straley was here in Cincinnati and now at the Marlins, and so Bryce comes in. One oh two Diaz hits it out to deep left field. This ball is off the top of the wall and then off a of Duval. Double for Diaz. His first hit of the afternoon. It's the top of the wall and comes down, hits him right in the leg. Not really how you want to play it. But no, sir. <laughs> things happen out there in a hurry. You can finally see Diaz get a good swing on a pitch over the plate and drive it off the wall. Here's Paul DeYoung. And a foul ball. Bryce is 24 years old. He was born in China. When the Reds acquired him in January, rated as the ninth best prospect in the Marlins organization. Had 15 relief appearances, two different stints with Miami a year ago. Opponents only hit 173 against him last year in the big leagues. Greg Garcia at the on deck circle. Oh and two the count on DeYoung. Sung Wan Oh the Cardinals closer. Was throwing getting some work in and DeYoung hits that out to deep left. Duvall on the track makes the catch. Diaz back to the bag at second. So here's Greg Garcia. Tomorrow night will come your way at 6:30. Helix in and walk up. So Brebbia, one inning of work. All zeros for him. And a ball to Garcia. Cincinnati picked up three in the fifth and two more in the sixth. They've out hit the Cardinals 12 5 in this game. Outfielders straight away in the 1 0 pitch. This season, the Reds have already used 21 pitchers. The starters have struggled while their relief core has improved this year. Third, the National League in ERA. Ground ball to first. Votto will take it himself. Steps on the bag. And there's two outs. Top of the lineup in Matt Carpenter. Matter of fact, their bullpen only has four blown saves, second fewest in the National League. Colorado with three. Carpenter is grounded into the shift. Single back in the fourth and struck out swinging in the sixth. One for three on the afternoon.
they got some really nice arms down there in that bullpen. You see a guy like this comes in in a 5 nothing lead, usually maybe your mop up guy, throwing 96 with sink. A couple lefties down there with 95, 97. I don't know what we said it early on. I think this team is building in the right direction. Talked about early this season, beginning of the year when they were in town, and kind of like the way this club's going. Mike Leak went five innings for the Cardinals today. Snapped his streak of 11 starts in a row of going at least six. Last Cardinal with 12 or more was John Lackey. Here's a 1 1 pitch with two outs. Up and in. Michael Lorenzen and Wandy Peralta start to throw in the Reds bullpen. 0 for St. Louis. The 2 1 pitch. Two balls, two strikes. So the Cardinals today keeping Carpenter in the leadoff spot after a little bit of success last night with his home run. As you mentioned, you can tinker with a lineup, but you just can't all of a sudden turn it right over. This makes it hard, and it also shows the players that might be panicking a little bit, searching. We all know that you're searching for something, but to flip flop everybody is just hard message to get away with. You don't want to send that message, and so yet you just try to tinker a little bit. Full count, two outs, runner at third. It still blows me away, and it's hard for me to believe that. A guy like Matt Carpenter that hit 295 the leadoff hole and then hit 220, 240 in second and third. It's odd. 3 2 pitch. Carpenter, high fly ball, opposite way, it is gone. Second home run in as many days. His 11th of the year. He's now driven in 30, and the Cardinals get on the board. It's a 5 2 Cincinnati lead. You gonna pencil him in tomorrow in the leadoff spot? Yep. <laughs> You're starting to write up the lineup card. So two hits today for Carpenter. Takes that to the opposite field. And finally, someone got a ball up in the zone today to hit. See, this ball's even off the plate a little bit, but it's up, so you can go after it. Does a good job of staying behind the ball. It's like we were talking about with Scooter Jeanette the other day. Every ball that he hit, he was behind. The ball with his body. Fowler, a bouncer to Joey Votto. And the inning comes to a close. We'll move to the bottom of the eighth. Matt Carpenter with his 11th home run, RBIs 29 and 30. It's now a 5 2 Cincinnati lead.
brought to you by Bud Light, famous among friends, and by Ford, the official cars and trucks of the St. Louis Cardinals. Great American Ballpark and the Reds three outs away from a four game sweep. Sung Wan Oh is our Chevy call to the pen. Esmende Alcantara, the switch hitter, will pinch hit. Six days of rest now for O, oh, so he needs some work. First pitch up in the zone, but a strike. Reds have scored 28 runs in this series. That's the most against the Cardinals in a four game series since 1970. And a strike. Here's a one two pitch to Alcantara. Taken high and outside. Two and two. Into shallow center field. Fowler is there, makes the catch. We've seen in this game Joey Votto go four for four. 22nd time he's done that in his career. Four hits in a game, 22 times. Zach Cozart extended his on base streak to 30 with a base hit. And a lot of runs in this series for Cincinnati. Here's Billy Hamilton trying to bunt his way on. Jerko, nice play. The tag is there by Carpenter. Very fine play on both ends. You got that right. Jerko makes a nice play. I like the play that Matt Carpenter makes, though. Doesn't panic and try to go over there and cross over the baseline right here. He just try and catch the ball and put the tag on him. With two outs, it brings in Cozart. And a strike. Cardinals left Piscotti, Jerko, Molina coming up. Three, four, and five in the lineup. Cozart base hit run scored back in the sixth grounded out flied out struck out fastball right down the middle one ball and two strikes Gets him to reach and a ground ball that's hit to short. Oh, a one, two, three, bottom of the eighth. Sends us to the ninth. And coming up for St. Louis, the heart of this lineup, Steven Piscotti, Jed Jerko, and Yadier Molina.
Very nice job out of the bullpen for the Reds as they try to finish off a sweep of four games against the Cardinals. It's our Chevy Cole to the pen. One of the bright spots today for the Cardinals, Matt Carpenter, two more hits, batting leadoff. Picked up a home run. Now has 12 home runs and 51 RBIs in his career against Cincinnati. That's the most against any opponent in his career. Suarez takes over at third base. Here's Piscotti, base hit to left center back in the seventh. Talking the other night just how tough Iglesias is turned into working out of the bullpen, throwing much harder and right handed batters. Good luck. <laughs> Only hitting 103 against him. Wow. I like, I like the fact that he said good luck. <laughs> well, what's interesting about him, though, we talked about the other day is look at the run he's got. But he's one of those guys that can drop down and still bring 97. But he can drop down and throw the breaking ball too. And unlike most guys, can only only will drop down and throw one pitch. Strike out of Piscotti. Road trip that started in Chicago, three heartbreaking losses, a couple of more tough losses late. As Jerko sends this one into right center, but Hamilton is there. And now St. Louis, one out away from their seventh consecutive loss. Scott Feldman is our Budweiser player of the game. Seven innings, four hits, struck out four in 100 pitches. In Kept the Cardinals off balance all afternoon long. On their feet here at the Great American Ballpark. And strike one, 97 on the gun to Molina. Last time swept in a four game series in Cincinnati 2003, winless on a seven game road trip, 07. Going to the count. And the next two, Yadier Molina. Waves at it. Struck him out. It's a sweep for the Cincinnati Reds. Four games over the Cardinals. And for St. Louis, seven losses in a row and a winless road trip. Another tough game today. Another inning or two got away from him. Couldn't keep it. Couldn't come back from it. Just like you said, it's a tough road trip, tough day today. Really got to find a way to claw back into this race, get this team winning, and hopefully some home cooking will do it for them. Another tough afternoon and day at the office for the Cardinals. Post game show. It comes your way next. <laughs> 